Taoiseach, in relation to the issues of today, um, there are many, but as predicted, we are heading headlong into a major industrial dispute with our state bus company, Bus Erin. Uh, and over the 110,000 regular passengers face chaos next Monday. The staff of 2,600 face very worrying times, concerned about their own, not just terms of conditions, but actually the future of the company itself. Uh, and it seems to them that in one fell swoop, an attempt has been made to dramatically and fundamentally alter the nature of that company and the nature of the terms and conditions of the workers um, who perform a very valuable community and social service uh, in addition to the commercial activities of the company. And I put it to you some time ago, Taoiseach, was the government committed to the maintenance of a state transport company, particularly one that provides a very significant service to regional and rural Ireland. Because if it does, stemming from that comes a lot of policy implications. And there have been warnings to the effect that the company is facing insolvency. Well, if it is, it very much comes into the political domain because the government is the shareholder. And it would have to come before Leinster the Doyle in terms of any actions that would flow from such a declaration of insolvency. So the stance of the Minister for Transport, in my view, is not acceptable uh, and should have intervened much earlier. We do know that for the entirety of 2015, plans were being submitted to the Department of Transport, uh, but were left on the shelf. Why? Because a general election was coming uh, at some stage uh, in the following 12 months. And that's what, in essence, intervention was not made. Intervention that could have eased the situation somewhat um, well in advance of the current crisis. But for political reasons, the government of the day decided not to act uh, on plans that were submitted to it in relation to the difficulties facing um, Bus Airden. And that inaction over, inaction over a long period of time contributed to the current situation we are in. But the idea that you can do everything in one fell swoop and essentially uh, accelerate a race to the bottom in terms of terms and condition, I think is a bridge too far. Uh, and is one of the reasons why we're now heading uh, towards a major uh, industrial conflict. One that could spread to the railways and indeed to Dublin Bus and other companies, which I think would create uh, chaos in terms of uh, people's everyday lives, getting to work and so on and getting to services. And we all want to avoid that. And I have put it to you time and again, Taoiseach, uh, that the Minister, at the very minimum, has a responsibility to set the mood music. Uh, one gets the sense that he is silently, uh, on the margins, acquiescing to the demise of a state company, uh, a bus transport company, that his own ideological position is one that doesn't lend itself to the continuation of bus here. Um, I hope I'm wrong, but at the very least he should have, from a, on, on the policy issues, such as the application of the free travel scheme, such as the public service obligation routes, he should have uh, engaged and facilitated meetings between his department, the National Transport Authority, bus air and management and unions, to at least tease out the policy dimension to this issue. And there are policy dimensions to it. It is not just simply an industrial relations um, issue that can be put into its box. Could I put it to your T-shirt that that type of initiative is now urgently required? And will you discuss with the Minister uh, the initiatives he can take uh, to make sure that a contribution is made by him and the government to the resolution of this issue? I too would like to welcome our visitors from across the water here to the, to the Doyle and uh, hope they enjoy their visit. Obviously, they may have issues to talk about in respect of Brexit and so on. And clearly, um, Deputy Martin, there will be an opportunity uh, to pay tribute to um, our late colleague, Peter Matthews, to uh, whose wife, Susan, and family ex extend our deepest sympathy. He was always a different personality with a particular view in respect of financial circumstances as they apply to the country. But I say to you that, um, in respect of your question, uh, I agree with you, nobody wants to see this happen. Uh, and obviously it's a, it's a matter of grave concern to the government uh, and to the uh, commuter uh, belt and people who travel and use bus Aaron that this might happen. Now, let me assure you, Deputy Martin, that the government is committed uh, to, a straight, uh, to a state transport company. 81% of passengers who travel with bus Aaron use the PSO subsidised service. As you're aware, it's not possible to subsidise a commercial 
a commercial uh, arm of, uh, of this and, and the expressway service uh, in the context of, of, uh, of Europe and where we are. Uh, I, I do not agree with you and do not accept your comment uh, that the Minister is silently acquiescing on the, uh, acquiescing on the margins uh, at the demise of a, of a state company. Minister Ross is both one member of the Cabinet and the Cabinet acts collect with collective responsibility here and the Cabinet is fully committed uh, to the retention of the state company. And I noticed that the statements made yesterday both by the board and the company and the trade unions I, th I think there's a, there's, a, there's a willingness there to engage in the sort of serious discussions that we all need, uh, that we all understand are needed to happen in order to solve this particularly difficult situation. And as I pointed out on several occasions already, the WRC, the Workplace Relations Commission, is ready as ever to assist. And there are some in the House here who claim repeatedly that the government and the minister should do something. And when asked what the focus of, uh, of, of that particular attention is, it's always about increasing subvention uh, and, and uh, assessing the free travel scheme. I've already pointed out to you that the subvention has increased uh, to 40 million in respect of this matter, uh, and there is no danger to the free travel scheme. The PSO subvention increased by 11% last year, increased by, um, sorry, uh, this year it's increased by 11%, last year was 13, and uh, Bus Air in itself has benefited from a 21% increase in the subvention in 2016. And that subvention applies to PSO services only, and it cannot under law be provided for commercial services. So if Expressway is losing 50,000 a day, this is a matter that needs to be addressed. Um, and obviously the WRC stands ready to negotiate and to uh, discuss with both the Union and the Board here. Um, the Minister for Transport and the Minister for Social Protection have already made it perfectly clear uh, and have advised their officials to report back very quickly on the funding of the free travel scheme to which there is no danger. Now, there is no amount of ministerial action that will resolve the issues internal to Bus Aaron. These issues can only be resolved through direct and realistic negotiations between employer and employees. And in respect of rural Ireland, it's already been made perfectly clear that any changes that arise from the express or to the expressway services will be taken up by the National Rural Transport Rural Authority, Rural. where they will step in um, and assist in cases where connectivity is threatened. Obviously, some deputies last week were alleging that, the, uh, that this was an attack uh, on rural Ireland. Actually, the public bus service in rural Ireland is expanding through increasing the amount of PSO funding in bus areas and providing a 24% increase in, in, in funding to we the rural transport the programme. Time. So I do hope that everybody uh, will Martin, assess this seriously and take the WRC I know it's an important issue, but we're constrained by um, uh, Deputy Martin. The Grant Thornton report was submitted in January 16 to Minister Donoghue and others, and you guys sat in it. Why? Because of the general election. You didn't want to deal with it. And it went down a full year and a bit. And then in one fell swoop, you're saying the workers are going to take the brunt for the entirety of the issues facing Bus Aaron. That's what's happening here. When Minister Ross was announcing his estimates for Bus Aaron, he never once alerted anybody to the crisis facing Bus Aaron. Read the press release that he issued on the day. It's full of self-praise. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Did he once alert anybody that there was a crisis coming down the tracks that Minister Donoghue knew about, that uh, Minister Ross's predecessor knew about, and that the government knew about? And in essence, Taoiseach, the government, whether it likes it or not, or whether it's transparent about it or not, or whether it will tell the truth or not, are presiding over it, the demise of Bus Airden as a public transport company. Many probably within Fine Gael agree with that anyway, uh, and that's probably at the root of the uh, inertia on the government side. It's an acquiescence uh, to the undermining of the company and to the reduction of workers' terms and conditions to levels in one fell swoop that, in my view, are not fair, are acceptable. I and I find it extraordinary yeah. that the independent alliance are presiding over that and standing by that uh, and not insisting on a proper policy perspective on this issue. Because if a state company is going to become insolvent, it de facto becomes an issue for this House and de facto an issue for the government. Well, as I said to you, 81% of passengers who travel on bus here and travel on a PSO subsidised scheme, and that subsidy has increased. And rural transport throughout Ireland is increasing by the extent uh, of uh, an increased subvention every year. The problem here, as you're well aware, 
is that the expressway service is, I understand, losing 50,000 a day, a day. That needs to be addressed. Who can address that? The WRC stand prepared to take unions and management in there now and discuss this question as to how you might make adjustments and changes uh, to bring about a better situation than you have now. And the National Transport Authority have already said that they will assist and assess any changes that occur uh, that arise from changes to the expressway service. And I've, have you not heard the people on the, on the, on the, on the National Airwaves talking about uh, you know, 45, 50 seater buses down narrow country lanes. There needs to be a change of, uh, of assessment as to whether that's, whether that's valuable or whether it's not. So that if, if, the, if, the, if the issue here is the expressway service and it's losing money on a daily basis, that needs to be addressed. The drivers and those who service bus Aaron throughout the rest of the country carry 81% of the passengers who travel on bus Aaron, and they do so in a very professional, okay, diligent and competent fashion. The issue, the nub of the issue needs to be addressed and the WRC stand ready to accommodate Kermai both sides and see can we avoid uh, a, a major strike next week which nobody wants.